guys, welcome back to Maxim Outdoors and if you're new to the channel, thank you for tuning in. Today's going to be a short video of finding natural fire lighting tinkers that you can find easily in most UK woodlands. I'm going to find four main tinders. Fatwood, Punkwood, Cramp Balls and Birch Bark. So let's just get to it, have a look around the woodland and try and find them. Yeah. This is the first in this tree. I don't know why there's a sheep skull on this. A bit freaky. But it's connected to quite a punky, and when I say punky I'm referring to it's a dead branch, but it's dead standing so the inside's gonna be dry. But actually inside the wood itself is quite soft and I'll show you how to use that to catch an ember off a ferro rod in a second. Nice matching Swedish pucko and my ferro rod there made by Neil Rowlands made by Chris Flint. Lovely little love his stamp on his. Anyway inside here let's break this down Again, so this is the pith that we're really looking for. This is not as good as I thought it was going to be, but it'll still be of use hopefully. Yeah, should be fine. When I do this, I really like to make a little bed to plant your ferro rod in, so that when you do strike the embers, you, you can really try and aim it into the into the pile of what I call punk wood. So secondly we were looking for a thing called fat wood. You can see here where these branches have been cut off and we've got a white residue which is actually the dried up sap of this tree itself but these trees these branches are going to be impregnated with this with the resins and it's actually the tree trying to heal itself but we're going to try and find a part of the branch which is broken off to about so far and inside that we're going to be looking for a thing called fatwood So the forestry of breed in this area, Forestry Commission, and this is a perfect example of the, the tree itself trying to heal itself and where they've cleared this path through for the, the overhead cables. They've obviously had to cut down any branches that are going to restrict the way. But you can see quite clearly here, the tree trying to pump out the sap to heal, the, heal its wounds. And it's that it's that we're actually looking for in a smaller scale. So we're gonna have to keep looking. So here's a perfect example. This branch of just cut off this tree has been broken by someone passing by. And then inside see if we can get a close up of this. So zoom in. Um might not be right. So how well you can see in here the outer bark and then the darker inside. So this is a, an example of the tree pumping resins into this branch trying to see, seal itself. So I'm going to show you what this looks like if you take it home and season it as well. Hopefully you can see the difference in the core of this compared to where it's out of bark. This isn't the best type of fatwood I've ever found, 
but there definitely is resins in there and if you smell it it just absolutely stinks of turpentine so we're going to take this bit home I'm going to batten that later for now I'll show you some that I've already collected done a bit of a blue peter here this is one I made earlier you can really see the colour difference so if we get a different piece of pine just to snap one off here you can see this is really light and the core is just really punky and dead compared to fat wood the, t the biggest difference is the weight this is so much heavier than non-fat wood so I'll show you how to start a fire with this so we want to take our piece of fat wood and really just start making some really fine shavings I'm either going to get away with doing this really pathetically or I'm going to have to do this whole shot again but let's try first before we write her off I don't know why my knife isn't There we go. This will burn dead black, which is the indication that it's full of resins. You can see the resin in the wood itself here. Absolutely bomb proof, even in really damp conditions. It's really good. It's a really good thing to go out and forage one day and then come back home dry it out and keep it in your tinder box you can see the black smoke coming off this really great lovely little shot there with the camera the camera's actually on on my axe All across the woodland floor, you find this stuff. The giveaway is just three clover like leaves, and also this white flowering head. This is wood sorrel. And if you eat it, it tastes just like apple green peel, green apple peel. Um, nice addition to woodland salads. But it's quite acidic, so don't eat too much of it or it'll give you a bad gut. Behind me is a dead silver birch. I did say in my previous video that this isn't native to Britain. That's a lie. I don't actually know where I heard that, but after further research in the Encyclopedia of Plants and Trees of Britain, it is native. So I eat my hat on that one. What we're going to do with this, the bark itself is full of resins and oils and it'll take a spark quite easily off a of ferro rod so we're gonna, gonna take a bit of this bark itself it does it does usually shed its this bark but I think because this one's dead it's actually stopped shedding itself we're gonna take a piece of this quite similar to the fat wood what we want to do with this is really start scraping some shavings because this is it's in this very outer bark that you're going to find those essential oils I mean essentially you could I guess scrape 
most woods in this manner and create a flame but with the addition of the oils that the birch produces it just burns much more vigorously and should burn black as well as the, the fat wood that we just lit previously I think this might be significant enough to show you what I mean that's a nice shot Right. So, on the back of this fallen ash, you've really got to look for these sometimes, but sometimes you'll find them in abundance, other times you'll really struggle to find them. But these are, go by quite a few names. King Alfred's Cakes. Um, I, I just like to call them fire cakes. They, they typically grow on the underside of fallen ash trees. Um, Cramp balls is another name. They've got a Latin name, but I refuse to use Latin, especially in my country of Wales. Let's get a close up on these. So, what you'll find inside these is that they're quite fibrous, and um, you don't necessarily need to fluff it up, but it does help. We'll try one without might end up breaking this because it is very dry I think it's been there quite a while under that big oak that one started smoking it, ember in it So there you go, there's another one that you can use. The fourth and final tinder. Just gonna leave that a minute. So here we have the four different types of UK tinders that you can find easily available in woodlands. We're gonna try and light them in order. So there's birch bark, you see it's quite easily taken a flame. So that's birch bark out the way, back and go. Onto the punk wood that we found inside of hazel. We'll give it another strike just to see if it explodes. It's gone up quite nicely. Quick and table wet. And that I can go. Onto the, the cramp ball. Fat wood, wish me luck. 
this up. I don't know where this is going to go. There we go. Straight into the flea, full of resins. Happy days. Back to the back of my bag. Guys, if you stayed with me to the end of that, thank you so much for watching again. If you want to see more videos related to the whole bushcrafting, press the like button, don't forget to subscribe. See you on the next one.